That's the plan. Guys, let's do this. Let's go in game. Let's introduce some players. So you have to the bottom left side of New Kirk Precinct. It is our red Terran player. It is Gummiho. This map again from the era of TVT when or from the era when Hellbat drops were the big thing in pretty much every single matchup. So we'll see how this is gonna go this time around. Again, Gummiho to the bottom left hand side is our Terran player entering this series. To the bottom right hand side of the map, our blue Zerg player will be Lasira coming in. And looking to see what he can get up to as he opens with a hatch, gas, and then most likely a pool in the very near future. So hatch, gas, pool coming on up. Just going to see the swarm pool coming down over here. And well, that's not too much of a surprise. Nice and standard so far. And as we uh, set on up into this and just look to see where we're going to be going. Just look to see where we're going to be headed over the next few minutes of the game. Now, we did see Lucera again earlier playing uh, two base Lair, two base Middlesk every single game against Alive when he went into a three game series with him. First game, he sort of just died because he uh, lost a few queens to an early Marine push. It was a good scout and reaction from Alive. But I wonder what uh, he's going to do this time around, if he's going to go for that Lair super early on once again or not. We'll find out in about a minute or so. That's when that Lair would start up if he's going to do the same old thing. Because he has been starting link speed, then waiting for the next turn of gas for his Lair. So. Keep our eyes open on that one, but for our Terran player, we are going to be seeing a factory-based opening. So he's going to go Reactor on the Barracks Factory on the way down next to it as well. Probably Reactor Hellions early on in this. And I do wonder, because it's Gummiho, do we see some mech play? Mech Gummiho, very well known for being a player who does like to play with his mech. New Kirk Precinct, a very good map to play mech on, because you've got the two bases over here, but your third base, also very easy to defend. You know, you come down this ramp a little bit, you sit here and here have a couple of tanks, and boom, you're killing it already. So, we'll see what's going to happen as we're going to be seeing the uh, Zergon Speeders starting to come on up. Command Center will come in on the natural expansion, so that's uh, going to be finishing very soon as the factory. Second factory going to be building, it's going to be a reactor again. So, I was going to say, like, this is one of the possibilities if you want to play mech, second factory early, but to play Hellion Cyclone now, you don't actually need a, sec a tech lab. You just put down a second reactor. And then you go start building this Hellion Cycle. And actually, this could very well be a build which we've been seeing a lot of already in the matchup, which is the Hellbat Cyclone attack very early in the game. We saw Ryong doing this yesterday, or maybe the day before in the Leifeng Cup. Um, no, it was yesterday, right? He played in SGL yesterday. So we saw Ryong doing this a bunch yesterday. And there is that lair, by the way, on the way for Lucira. He is going to make a lot of lings to maybe try and run by and do some damage with. Shouldn't have too much luck against these Hellions, though, so... This is actually a really nice opening for Gummiho so far. Four Hellions out against what's about to be a bunch of Lings. And he's also going to have the Cyclones on the way to make this a very aggressive hellbat based push in the very near future. His next hundred gas should go on that armory so that he can uh, make this happen. But obviously this leads into the kind of mech-based place. So there we go. Armory is on the way. And Gummiho just setting up into this. A single Zergon going to move forwards here from Lucera to see what he can get up to. Have a little bit of a look around. Moves forwards here. The Hellions roast that down nice and quickly though. No problem at all. Again, those few Zerglings just up to the top left-hand side. Just going to be uh, sat here. They're actually going to wait for the Hellions to move out onto the map so you can run by and do counter damage. It's going to maybe pull these Hellions back. It will probably delay Gummiho's attack here. Look at this. Lysir is so smart. Going to wait as long as possible before running on in so that he knows he can still force the, count uh, the kind of pullback. Gummiho lifts the depot, though. Two more Hellions pop out. and mm, I mean, what does he do? He just pulls these SCPs away. I think he's just going to say, cool, I'm going to lose these. And look at this. Spine crawl on the high ground. Goes over towards the third base. We'll not see it here. And here's that Spire starting to come up right away. We have a couple of Hellions starting to pop on out. Some he's starting to get enough units up back over here to defend. But there's the Spine crawl at the front. Can he really push forwards? Well, I guess that's what the Cyclones really help with. You see the Transfuse coming down on this Spine crawl straight away. A second Transfuse 2 doesn't kill the Cyclone, though. Gets it so low. Queens will turn and target it down instead, though, however. As you see the Spire halfway done as this attack continues. Here's Gummiho who is going to have to uh, really kind of pull out some damage. He has to take a lot of damage back at home himself. The Lings come in. He will roast these quite easily, but is there enough Hellbats? That is the question. I don't think there is. And honestly, this is a good defense by Lysira. As he holds off, this last Cyclone will actually get rid of these Zerglings. And maybe a couple more as well. Cyclones, they do a pretty good job training against Zerglings as well. We saw that in uh, Shoutcraft Kings uh, November. And as we're going to be seeing, oh my god, Hellions continue to come on in. They're going to go up this ramp. I mean, this is awkward now because they can morph into Hellbats on the ramp and continue to move in towards the main base and get further damage done. I actually really like this. Morphing in just two Hellbats and using the rest of the Hellions as Hellion mode. And as actually, in the end, Gummiho is going to continue to get damage done here, continuing to push on through 
and just looking to continue picking up a bunch more workers. Seven more drones picked off here already. This Hellbat moves towards that's nine workers killed off here. A couple of uh, Hellions continue to run on in. Still in Hellion mode, so they can just chase drones a little bit more easily. The spine crawl at the front is nice and all, but is it enough? More cyclones being made as I guess he's going to try and fight against the mutants with these. I mean, you look at this, actually, Gummy, who isn't that far ahead in workers despite the damage he's achieved because he did take a lot of damage due to that initial run by, by Lasira. So that's really, really kind of a cool little way that Lasira has dealt with this attack, setting up early with those Zerglings and then running by with those to do a bit more damage. I mean, what would have been the better choice for Gummy Ho? I mean, just knowing about the Zerglings really shutting those down and stopping them from being on the map. Four Cyclones being made at a time. I don't know if that's enough to fight against these Mutas because the Cyclone anti air is not brilliant anymore. So... I mean, yes, it's going to do something, but is it really going to shut this down? I'm not 100% convinced just yet, so I guess we'll have to just wait and see. He is coming in here, we'll clean up this uh, Rax, and uh, that will go down now. Actually, losing the Rax is sort of important because it means he has to rebuild a barracks before he can build more factories or a starport or anything, so that's going to be a little bit frustrating. Actually, do you need a barracks to build a starport, or is it just the factory? Does it, is it the factory that unlocks the starport? I actually don't know. I should really know that. It's one of those uh, quick trivia things which is like, huh? Wait, what do you need? I'm not sure. Anyways, turret go uh, engineering bay goes down. Maybe a bit late considering how so long ago he saw these meters. Um, saw these a long time ago and yet only just now putting the engineering bay down for turrets. And I see six cyclones moving on to the map here to look to see what they can achieve. Currently, work count is 41 to 32 favoring the Sebra, but look at the army supplies. 39 to 15. The fact that Lucira lost so many drones and was just making drones for a long time is really apparent right now in those army supplies. So, let's see what you can do with these Cyclones. They're not going to turn. Finally, they turn to lock on. Again, they don't really deal with the Mutas super easily, though, I don't feel. Um, like, I, I, I just don't feel they deal with them super well. Like, you can see how little damage they really do. Four Cyclones locked onto it, and the Mutas, like, twice. And the Mutas still isn't dead. Absolutely crazy. Now, he is just going to be able to use the ground attack to get rid of this hatchery. Locks onto a Mutas again. I think that's the thing, he can sort of kite away, right? So even if he's slow to kill mutas, he still does eventually kill them. As you can see, his scan coming down helps him lock on a little bit longer. Uh, he's just going to run up this ramp as well. Actually, I just don't think there's enough here for uh, Lucio to keep on sort of defending. We're going to see the lock-ons once again. He'll kite away, just getting rid of another muta or two and pushing forwards once again. And again, I mean, the mutas, when they're not locked onto, they're very happy to kind of run forwards and to trade. But it's when they're locked onto, they do eventually go down. And that's the thing, he doesn't want to be losing these mutas. He knows they're expensive. How many mutants are left here? Actually, quite a few mutants still remain in the skies. Uh, six or so. And he's trading off quite a lot, but... Um, he's trading off quite a lot, but uh, not too many. 5.1k to 4.7k resources lost. A few more Hellions joining up now. More Cyclones on the way. But Gummyho's going to back away. You've got to remember, he did already kill this third base. And he's got to be very happy about that, you know? Killing the third base already. There's a pretty big uh, benefit for him. So already getting rid of that. That's a really nice benefit here. As we see mutants going to be coming through... Um, down towards this bottom left hand side so gonna be coming in towards this main base looking to see what they can get done as they fly on in i'm just gonna be seeing the uh, missile turret here to help fight against these few lists so i mean it's taking a little bit more damage and, and again just being annoying taking down a gas is quite important obviously i mean when you play mech gas is your uh you know gas is what you sort of rely on is what you uh, kind of really love so you kind of lose the gas that's important this is nice as well ling's coming into the natural because gummy hole can't really defend this the muta's can push the Cyclones away. You know, if the Cyclones are kind of dealing with the Mutas, they're not dealing with Lingus. If they go down here, they just die. Which means that actually, let's see if the counterattack is going to be good to win the game. Cyclones just not good enough against the Mutalisks. There's no real anti-air there for Gummyho. And when combined with the Lings... Let's do this then, guys. We're going to jump in-game in a moment or so. Gummyho versus let's see And trailing in the series is going to be our Terran player to the top left-hand side of the map. Let's see if you're cheering on Gummyho. And to the bottom right-hand side, our red Zerg player. It is Lysira. All right, so as we set up into game two. Again, Cyclone's just not really doing the job here. Just not really achieving enough. So a little bit unfortunate, but it's just the way of life right now. Cyclones do not do very well against air-based units, so... There's not really too much more we can do about that. As you just see this, uh, Overlord starting to move towards the upper left-hand side of the map. So Overlord starting to move out onto the map here. I see a hatchery starting up from Lassira. I mean, hatch first, nothing too surprising as we set up into the second game.
Yeah, factory for the starport with Rex is tied to the factory. I know. It's like one of those things where it's like I, I know it and I just like start saying I'm like, well, wait a minute. Am I being an idiot? And actually, I'm just being an idiot for sort of second guessing myself and being a... It's, I, mean, I was just being stupid, right? So we'll get over it. Taco stuff again with another cheer. This time cheer 40. Very, very much taco stuff. Let me see some Western hearts in the chat, please, guys. Show some love for taco -y stuff. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. A cheer 50 overall. They all add up. still love the cheers. I was watching Base Trade yesterday, and they enabled cheers for the first time. And uh, <laughs> it was kind of uh, fun. It was kind of crazy seeing all the people cheering. It's pretty fun. I like cheering, but then at the same time, I like... I like cheering, but at the same time, when I buy cheers, I always look at them like, man, these cheers are expensive compared to just donating to someone. But uh, they're still cool, and they still give you extra benefits, right? Like, you know, you can... Um, I feel as though like stuff like being able to see a message like notified in chat and being able to have a pin cheer is pretty cool as well. I limit my cheers, uh, pin cheers to cheers over 100, but um, I think that's pretty cool as well. Pin cheers, just little things like that. I feel as though Twitch are making a lot of good steps towards kind of improving these sort of features. It's really nice, actually. Like, I mean, I think as a streamer, you got to be pretty happy with Twitch because like a lot of what they've been doing lately really has been just continuing to really improve like the entire like like the entire site like it really is i've been loving it like you know i look at like twitch and i'm like wow this place is getting better and better as each year goes by as each day goes by even fast left from the Sierra going into the fast middleless play once again here in the early stages they're going to be about halfway done in the next few moments so that's going to be uh, him on the way towards the middleless play what's up ben in the chat as well the muslim resubbing for three months thank you very much mate Good to see you at Home Story Cup again, as it always is. Hopefully we see each other again soon somewhere out in the wild world that is StarCraft 2. Or just eSports in general. Actually, um, I'll talk to you about it later, but uh, I was going to ask you about something. But uh, I'll talk, to about you. Uh, talk about it later. Anyways. Uh, Ling's just going to be moving around and uh, backing away to the right-hand side. We can see a Raven on the way up. I'm just going to see a couple of Hellions going to be popping out here as well. So a couple of Hellions going to pop out and... Yeah, just again, a bit of a weird opening from Gummy Hill. Like a super fast Raven in TVZ. Well, that's what uh, new uh, new patches give us. Weird builds. Two Hellions make it in towards the mineral line here and they are going to look for some worker kills. They're going to find four in total so far. Uh, maybe one more shot can get in one more, but he doesn't quite make it. A few Ling's going down as well. I mean, that's great and all, but uh, not um, quite going to find too much else. Raven is out. A Viking now on the way as well. I mean, what what is this? Like an overlord hunting squad? Is it like an anti middleisk play? I I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, he has seen the lair. He s did not see the spire go down. Very, um, very interested, actually, as to... Why exactly Gummy has decided to do what he's doing at this point? As we're going to be seeing these Lings starting to move down towards the bottom right-hand side. So some Lings moving down towards the lower right-hand side from the Sierra. Looking to see what he can get up to. Continuing to go in towards this two-base middleless play in the early stages of this game. I mean, at this point, it's like, wow. You know, at this point, we may as well make a guide on, like, two-base meters because we've got so many replays of the Sierra doing it. Giving us a great example of uh, how to utilize it as we're going to be seeing this. So the Sierra going to get shot down as it tries to morph on in. Where's the raven? We're going to go look for the raven here in a second. Is it just sat at the front? It is. Really intrigued by this raven. Like, what on earth is this about? Like, what on earth is this build order by Gummy Ho? It's so different from anything you would usually expect. Very, very unique. As we're going to see a single change in moving towards the front. Let's see. I'm just going to use this to keep an eye out. It's always funny. When you play mech as a tower and then a change in walks in, it's just like, you know... Changes like sometimes they might have mold in, like try and hide, and it's very rare that they really kind of have a, a super great effect if like the other player sees them. It's like when there's like a change in that build comes a marine against a mecking terror, it's like, oh, that's interesting. We are, uh, you know, I've got a marine. I wonder if that's not actually my unit. 
engines need to adapt. You need to, there needs to be like an upgrade you can uh, get for overseers and for change engines, which allows them to morph into Hellions or something instead, or like a Stalker. So that's a little bit less obvious. Can you imagine? That'd be sick. Change and upgrade. That's that's the future of StarCraft 2. I'm just calling it right now. Five Cyclones on the way with a couple of Vikings up. Three Vikings and some Cyclones coming up as well. He should have plenty. Oh, the Widow Mines too. He's going to get disgusting shots on the first middle. It's just sitting in wait there on the edge. And all of a sudden, Lysir takes a lot of damage. Vikings are going to be good as well to trade. And there's the PDD to fight the Mutalisks. I guess it's just an anti-fast Mutalisk play. I guess that's... Um, I guess that's just the way it goes. Hmm. Interesting. Like, that was... Uh, it's been an interesting build, but it's working out so well for Gummy Hook because he's completely shutting down everything Lysir is doing. Lysir is going to go into this roach base follow-up, which... Hmm, I sort of light against the bio play. Because I feel as though when you go against bio, like, roaches can hit this time where they're super powerful before you have a lot of bio up. Against mech, I always feel as though the roaches just... I mean, roaches are the right decision. I just feel as though being aggressive with roaches isn't necessarily the best way to go. So if he attacks, I wouldn't like this. But maybe... I mean, maybe it can work, actually, before there's any tanks out. And there isn't any tanks just yet. The first one is on the way, currently building. Plenty of cyclones, though. I guess we're going to see how good exactly these cyclones are going to be in the next few moments as we see Lassira. Gonna be backing away out of the main base now, going to go over through the top side. So, through the top side, uh, we're gonna be seeing this uh, group of meters just backing off. And you see a few roaches starting to move forwards here as well. They're gonna run into this double widow mine right away. And it's a little bit damage already. Cyclones from the right hand side as well, and you can just see these cyclones are doing way too much damage. Where are the middle is, they're in the main base, not here to help out the roaches. I mean, they're still being hunted down by these Vikings. It is not looking pretty at all for Lassira in game number two. Gumiho continues to defend. He's damn supplied, but he's making mech against Roaches. Like, of course he's going to be damn supplied. Roaches are so supply inefficient. This is very much so to be expected. And if this big Roach kind of play doesn't work out for Lassira in the next few moments, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. I love this as well. Rax will land just to choke up this area, make it that little bit more difficult for these few Roaches. A few Hellions going to run by as well. And just look to see what else is going on. What upgrade is this, by the way? Someone just asked in the chat. That's Magfield Launches. Increases the Cyclone range by two. So that is the kind of change up from the Cyclones. It's a different upgrade, a new upgrade. It's uh, just for the Cyclone. For the Cyclones. Two Liberators on the way as well. So again, we just see Gummyho continue to build up here into a pretty decent position. Gummyho continue to move around with this Hellion. And so we're just going to shut that down right now. Coming on in and pick it off quite easily. Zerglin going to be pulling back as well for Lysira towards these roaches. So pulling back towards these roaches and all of these units going to gather up together. Scan from Gumiho into the main base of Lysira right now. Looking to see what else is going on in there. Just doesn't see much. Sees it's still there. Which is, I guess is important. He wants to know maybe how fast his opponent is tacking up into maybe a hive to get vipers out to try and deal with this mech army. Without a hive, I think he's probably thinking like, man, what on earth are you going to be doing? Like, what on earth are you even going to do against me? Like, without vipers, you're doomed. And... He's kind of right. Like, I don't think this Roach-based army on his own is going to do a lot at all. We're going to see the Vikings pulling back tight against an Overseer. The Cyclones just kill so much. The tanks kill so much. The rest of the Roaches come in way too late. A turret's at the back of the Ravens. Just going to add on a little bit of extra DPS, and you can just see that the Zerg army is absolutely melting. GG's. The Roach boost does not work out for Lysira. And we tie things up here. Take you straight on in. Thanks for sticking with us through the ad break. Obviously, if you are watching and you uh, do use ad block, but do enjoy the stream, then do consider... Switching off those ads, or switching off the ad block, uh, is a big part of our uh, way of surviving here on the stream, the ad revenue. So, if you are watching, do consider turning off your ad block. Thank you very much. Guys, to the top right-hand side, we're going to be introducing our blue Terran player. Are you ready for Gummy Hole? Making it happen in game number two. That didn't quite work out for him in game one. Game two, he just had the complete hard counter. Uh, mech opening to actually go up against Midas, so that sort of worked out. The Raven early, obviously something you don't usually see, but it does work, um, did work out quite nicely considering the way things went. As we have to the bottom left hand side, our red Zerg player is going to be Lassira. Looking to see what he can get up to over the next few minutes of this game. Are we going to see two base Midas again? That's what I've got to ask myself, honestly, at this point. I mean... It's one of these um, builds which he's been using again and again. He's still mining gas after speed, so you got to look at it as a possibility already in this game. But it's really kind of 
I don't know. I don't feel as though it's given him that much success overall. I feel as though it worked very well against a lot. I, I feel as though it actually didn't work. I, don't know, I I guess it's given him a fair amount of success. I just don't want to believe. Like, I feel as though like the first, the second time he did it against a live, he um, he didn't really do much with the meters. It was just the roach follow up. But I guess that's part of it, right? Like you spend so much preparing for the meters and so on, and fighting against those that you're not necessarily ready when the kind of roach follow up comes in, which is what he tried to do in the last game. But Gumiho was just so ready. Like, he shut down the meters, took no damage at all. And then he went into his anti-roach play as well, which is just cyclones and four and tanks. And he just had way too much. There's absolutely no way the Sierra was able to do anything at all about it. So, let me see a couple of uh, Reapers so just jumping up in towards the main base here. And jumping back down towards the low ground now as well. Going to see one Zergling going down. And not oh, two Reapers. It's not often you see a two Reaper opening, but uh, this time it's going to be pretty effective. Doing a fair amount of damage. And... Again, just trading. Being a little bit of a nuisance. And, well, guess what, guys? It's time for that lair once again. Gumiho does not scout this. Does not go far enough into the main base. But I wonder if he just sees it and recognizes it because of the lack of a third base or so here. As he will back away with his Reapers and Hellions towards the natural expansion now. So, these units are going to be gathering up towards the natural. And we do see just one Marine from Gumiho just patrolling backwards and forwards. And seeing SCV starting to build up as well. A couple more Hellions coming out. Gumiho, actually, no, sorry, just one more Helen coming out. He's actually switched his uh, starboard onto the tech lab once more. So, sort of feels as though he knows what's happening. Going to get a Viking early to shut down overlords, I guess, then the Raven once again. Uh, the point defense drone definitely helps a lot against uh, uh, in the last game for him. Um, just to deal with the mutas again initially. Like, if you get rid of the mutas initially, life becomes so much simpler. Factory will lift, I guess, go onto the reactor. And uh, I guess we wait to see what comes up next. Changing comes in as well, does a little bit of scouting in the main base for now. So if I can get to find the overseer, but it just managed to morph on into the overseer, so that's a little bit of a nuisance. I mean it can still it will still go down. In a way it may have been worth just cancelling and saving the gas, because he's not gonna get much value out of this, like a changing towards the front. Like what's he really gonna see of a changing at the front? Well nothing, it's already been killed, you know, so doesn't really gain a lot of this Viking. Picks up his first kill of the game and will continue its hunt for overlords around the map over the next few minutes. So we have him pops out. Hallian production continues as well. Armory coming up this time. Did you see the Armory last time? I feel as though we did, but we didn't really get a chance to see kind of Hellbats coming into play at all. So you're going to see these um, units starting to move over. And they're uh, going to already roast away the Zergling on the, uh, on the watchtower. These two, uh, four Hellions and two Reapers just looking to see what they can get up to. A few Hellbats are going to be uh, morphing on in and... Just going to continue to trade onto this uh, hatchery, so continue to do a little bit more damage. Zergon's trying to come forwards again as well. A couple of grenades going down. Can he get rid of this hatchery? I would imagine not. Obviously, he can't be transfused just yet because it's still building. So, I mean, it's getting very low. In fact, at this point, you can probably just suicide onto it, and he's going to do it. There's the cancel. A few Zergon's taking some more damage as well. The Muse come out and start turning this around. He's going to come in, pick off a hell about there, get rid of a Reaper. And the third hatchery will also go down here. So, third hatchery goes down. Muda's... Clean up this last Hellbat as well. And we're just going to be seeing Lassira going to be moving out onto the map once again. So moving back out into the center. We're going to be seeing a, uh, what's that? a couple more factories coming down. So Mech once again out of Gummiho here. Three factories in total. And the game will just calm down a little bit as Lassira going to be gathering his mutants and see where he can go. Beef Riber, my man, how you doing? Thank you very much for the seven month free sub. Greatly appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving, dude. Have a uh, have a happy Friday, man. As you see, these Helen uh, Mutalists are still kind of flying around. And also, I appreciate the kind words. Very uh, kind words in your sub message. Thank you very much. Uh, Mutalists continuing to fly around as we're going to be seeing the third CC just landing over here. Vikings going to be uh, trying to fight these Mutalists. Actually, uh, no micro from Gummy Horse. He will lose those two Vikings. And the mutants starting to be a little bit of a nuisance as Ling's getting towards the main base as well. Gummyho, what's going on? All of a sudden, is all over the place trying to defend this. And we've seen these uh, mutants picking off an SCV. That turret gets cancelled as well. Eight workers killed. It's been a pretty decent uh, setup here from our uh, Zerg player. He's done a lot with the mutants and the Ling's this time around. Once again, going to be a Roach-based follow-up, but it's actually going to be not just Roaches, but Hydras as well. Grooved Spines on the way. So that Hydra range already queues up Hydra speed as well. Look at that. He's just like, yep, sure, don't care about the resources right now. Let's just queue up, make sure I don't forget that, get it ASAP. And he's just going to go straight into Hydras. And with a uh, Hive on the way as well, 
He's probably just going to be looking for Viper Hydra as his composition. I've heard it's pretty good against the Terran army. you got to remember that Vipers are so good right now because, especially the Siege Tanks, they can't just kind of tank a vac away when they get Blinding Clouded, so they don't really do a lot anymore. And as you're going to be seeing these... Uh, Meters still looking around, still trying to do a bit more damage, picking away at a Hellion there for a moment or so. Hive about halfway done, and another Hatchery starting to come up here as well, so Hatchery coming on up, and Queen is uh, on the way, just so it's just sat between them. Look at this, Happy Queen got in its Hatchery and its Hive, like, oh, look at this. Got one of my one of my Hives growing on up, another Hatchery from the way, like, I don't know what I'm saying, Queen. I don't think Queen's get that happy about hatcheries. Surely Queen, I guess Queen's kind of more about drones, right? Because they come from the hatcheries. So it's not really like the Queen's looking after them. I mean, it kind of is, though. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think uh, Queen's like their hives? Do you think they're really loyal to them? Do you think they're proud of it when their hatchery becomes a hive? I think I need to stop talking shit. I think that's what I need to do. Vipers are on the way out right now as we see some more hydras on the way as well. So it is going to be that Hydra Viper... Which I've heard so much about. I'm yet to see it in play. I haven't casted actually that many mech games surprisingly yet on the new patch. So really looking to see what uh, how this is going to go. And you'll see these moves still just flying around and looking to see what they can uh, get up to. Looking to see if they can uh, do enough at this point. As again the rest of these hiders coming through to the right hand side as well. And well, just waiting for those vipers to show up with some energy to try and. Uh, do some abducting, do some uh, shutting down of this army. Well, how that's going to be loading up here. Going to see some Hellbat drops. I wonder if he actually gets aggressive with these. Looks like he's going to load. Looks like he's probably just going to utilize these to drop on top of the army. Obviously, if you get a bunch of uh, Hellbats on top of Hydras, it's going to be a pretty good time for you as he shuts down two of these Middlesks. The Overlord goes down as well. Gummy Hook just defending and cleaning up the Sky Army of Azek player right now. Still plenty more Hydras coming out here. And look at the transition as well. Great Aspire halfway done already. So no time wasted by Lysir at all in terms of continuing to tech on up right now. Going to go straight in towards those Broodlords. And as these units begin to march on forwards, we're going to see what's up. Two tanks already firing away. And a couple of these Hydras. Uh, Parasite bombing some abducts. And we're going to be seeing a few uh, PDDs drop to try and help out. But doesn't do too much. Problem is those Vipers got targeted down pretty swiftly. Two of them falling. Just turn around, picks off two more Vikings. But you really need to keep those Vipers alive. They're expensive to replace. Without the Vipers, life is so much more difficult to attack into this mech army. That said, Brood's on the way up. And if you can keep the Viking count low, then that alone is going to put him into a pretty decent position here. Because without Vikings, the Broodlords should never really die. Because if there's enough Broodlords, the fours will never get close enough. And that, there's not really any empty air in this army. So... And this is, I still like this from Gummy Ho and Lassier. I like both of their positions. Like, it's pretty even. It's really going to come down to engagements. It's just we need a little bit more anti air from Gummy Ho. But he is replacing those Vikings. You know, a couple more of them on the way. So he's going to have five in total once again. More tanks on the way up for him, too, as he does run by for a couple of Hellbats. Sorry. Uh, not run by them, so just a Hellbat drop. He comes in here. You also have some action towards the third base. And he's a uh, Hellbat's actually fighting against a Korean while doing some drawings. Actually, pops some of the lava there. And it's going to be seen. Continue to fight, do a little bit more damage. I mean, this has been decent. Seven workers killed, was very nearly a few more as well. And it just slows the Zerg down a little bit. As we're going to begin to siege at the front, Corruptors will be there to support against the Viking count. A couple of fours on the way. As we see, the first two Vikings are out on their own. One of them will go down instantly. And we're going to see tanks trying to move forwards, but it's just not enough. You know, tanks on their own, just not enough at all. As we're going to be seeing these fours. So I'm going to fight against these Corruptors sitting in a turret as well. Actually, let's see, really needs to be careful about what he's doing here. Pulling Hydra's forwards too. The one Viper that's left alive hits a big blind cloud, but the rest of the tanks are still unblinded, and that means they're still firing onto this army, and a lot of the Hydra's getting taken down here. As we see more Vikings pushing forwards, he'll push away the Corruptors. This Broodlord's going to go down as well. Great trade here by Gummyho. question is, how does he follow this up? Does he attack across the map? Does he sit back and just rebuild again? What does he go for now? More Vipers are coming into play. And as we see, Lassira setting up once again in this game to just sort of go for this kind of ground-based attack. He's given up on the Sky and the Broodlords. That didn't work for him at all. Gummy Hoach shut that down super easily. And it didn't look as though he was in trouble against that, even for like a slight second. Like, it was really like, just like, yep, okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm completely fine here. No problems. It was exactly like that, so that's... Uh, Pretty sweet as we can be seeing what's this over here. A couple of muters just harassing, slowly picking away the army. I mean, if they actually kill that, that could be pretty cool. But 
the likelihood of them being allowed to do that is very, very low to say the least. As you see the Vikings coming in, those two Middlesks will get shut down. Sensor towers are up for both players right here. You'll see a couple of Hellions just going to be moving around different directions. Four workers killed. And with four workers picked off, it's again just our turn player applying pressure while sitting back and building up this big, scary mech army. Currently at 178 supply, 179, 182. The supply is approaching 200 is the point I'm trying to make. He's getting to be maxed out, and so it's going to come down to these incoming engagements. Our Zerg player is once again repositioning over towards the center and to the bottom side. He's the player who's moving around on the map at this point, so can he get something done with this? You see, here we go. There's big bombs coming down, and Duck comes in on the four. The Syria, is he really going to keep on pushing forwards? He hasn't dropped any blinding clouds at all, which I find interesting considering the situation. Vikings helping to push the Vipers away. Picks off a lot of those. Again, I sort of come out of this feeling like I enjoyed Gumby Ho's trade a little bit better here. I mean, he's kept a lot of these big units alive, and he's got enough to stick around with. I mean, so does Lasira, but Lasira's sort of, you know, he doesn't can't keep on fighting because he's lost his Vipers again. These Vikings continue to trade so nicely. And again, repaired up too. Look at this, actually on Siege, and Gumby Ho will move forwards. I, don't, I, I like it because, you know what, he's trading well again and again and knowing that his opponent will take a little while to replace those Vipers, he has an opportunity now to push forwards and maybe get just a little bit more done. A couple of tanks siege up. These tanks siege up just keep doing so much damage. Look at this Hydra Force. It's going to get demolished and it sits for way too long in this army. Way too long there as we're going to see Brutal's warping in. I mean, they're just going to have to cancel because the Vikings are going to do way too much. Would like it if the tanks spread out just a little bit more because one blinding cloud is pretty devastating on this army right now. That hatchery goes down super quickly, but man, where are those Vipers? Over here towards the natural. He really needs to keep his tanks a bit more spread than he just had them there. This time it was okay because the Vipers weren't ready. But if they were ready, I mean, again, like a couple blinding clouds and then entire army is covered. So spreading out the tanks like he's doing right now is a necessity for Gummy Ho as he really just takes position on his opponent's side of the map and well here we go I feel as though we're going to be seeing Lassira try and attack on into this first blind cloud goes down two tanks covered and that's what we're talking about actually abducts a couple of tanks one forwards one actually goes into the blinding cloud range as well and that's what we're talking about but it's still just not enough and Gummy Ho in way too good of a position right now as we see Vipers getting a bit more energy once again Vikings come forwards here they get a shot off they don't actually connect correctly though onto the Viper and Viper will survive for now. Not even sieging up at this point as we see Hydra's just disappearing. Well, wow. I think that is just the point where you realize that Gummy has a bit too much when he isn't even bothering to siege up his units. The adduct forwards eventually kills the force, but it still takes a while. The medevacs there trying to evacuate those few units. A couple of tanks which are on lower health trying to be evacuated towards the back as well. The Sierra has to type out GG and he'll go 1-1 one one in this group now with Yushi left to play. Gummy will be 2-0 and oh with Yushi left to play and Yushi will be 0-1. Oh so... Actually alive, if 